So we've used Starlink all over Colorado at this point, down canyons, in the woods, out in wide open areas of sky, in the desert, in several different places that we can test it so that we can get a great idea of where we'll be able to work because we work full time from the van and where we're gonna have to drive to the coffee shop, which we don't necessarily wanna do. So number one, ease of use with the Starlink. It is as easy as they say. You literally plug it in, turn on the app, and let it do its thing. Set up your Wi-Fi password, and it is good to go. All right, we're gonna plug the satellite dish into the router. Plug the power cord into the router. Plugged in. So our next step is to open the app. All right, it says we're online, so we're gonna try and run a speed test. We're outside of Pogosa Springs here, and in kind of the middle of nowhere, we drove up like 30 minutes on a super slow, like seven mile per hour road. Zero cell phone service whatsoever, but we popped open the Starlink right there, and we got like 16 down and like three up. So not impressive speeds, but definitely a connection where no cell phone service has ever been before. Number two, reliability of connecting to the satellite or signal. We've had two instances in the last three weeks or so where we have had too much tree cover in order to get a good satellite connection with the Starlink system here. So Starlink update, this is our second location trying to use it. Obviously there's a lot of trees around here and not a lot of satellites within reach, I guess. So it failed here. We did not get any internet. It doesn't always work if there's not a free open spot in the sky. Now at one of the campgrounds, we were able to move sites and then run the 75 foot long cord out into the middle of a field and it worked great. It was like you couldn't even tell that the Starlink was part of our system because it was way off 75 feet into the field and that worked awesome. And then there was another spot where we were in kind of a treed area, but there was a opening in the sky and we thought we might be able to get a good path to the northern satellites, but it just kept having interference and it was not reliable, unfortunately at all. Another day, another test with Starlink. So you can see the satellite or the little dishy thing right back there. And you can see the van and you can see that we do have a decently clear spot to the sky, but it is a wooded area for sure. What we've noticed right here is that the signal is now going on and off quite a bit. When we get the signal and it says online, decent download speeds, decent upload speeds actually too, but it tells us that there are obstructions. So it's kind of interesting to note that like last night we were in a spot that didn't seem that much different, but it was totally rocking last night and this morning. And then we get up here and we're having a little bit of trouble. I'm gonna keep trying to adjust it, but you should know that it's not perfect all the time, especially if you're in a wooded area. And we tend to like to be in wooded areas and I don't think it's bad. You just have to pay a little bit more attention where you're gonna be parking your vehicle if you're gonna be looking for internet connection. So I'm gonna keep playing with it. Number three, the quality of connection and the speeds on the Starlink and what can you expect? So I do a lot of uploading. I have a business that requires videos to be published in batches in you know five to 20 gigabytes at a time. So I'm pushing a lot of media up into the cloud. So I've had a lot of time to test this out and see how it works. We're getting anywhere from, let's say 40 to 50 megabytes per second down, all the way up to 150 megabytes per second down. And then the up is a little bit more disappointing where it probably averages somewhere around three to four megabytes per second. And the most we've seen it is somewhere around 19. So if you can get it anywhere near 10, it pretty much does the job for what I need in a fairly quick fashion, but it has been reliable enough if I'm kind of playing this game of like, I need to upload something for multiple days in a row 
and being able to plan ahead. Because what you can do is you can go into the middle of nowhere, make sure that you have a clear direct path into the sky and have a pretty good idea that you're at least gonna get three or four megabytes per second up, which is not great, but it allows me who does a lot of uploading to still get the work done. I just know that I have to batch my things a little bit earlier in the week in order to make sure that I have time for it to trickle up into the cloud. Now, hopefully Starlink is able to increase those speeds through, I don't know, satellites, software updates, something like that. I'm hoping, fingers crossed, because that would be the best of the best. Number four, pricing for the Starlink. You could probably go on starlink.com and check it out yourself, but you're essentially looking at like, I think it's about $700 for the equipment and then $135 a month for the RV version of the Starlink system, which is pretty darn close to you know what we were paying way back at for our home internet, so it's not that bad. The other thing, that's really cool is that you can toggle the subscription on and off. So let's say we're gonna go and head overseas for a month. We can toggle it off and it doesn't charge us for that month. We get back, we toggle it back on, it charges us and we are good to go. They've made it really seamless for travelers, one month at a time. So you, I don't think it works or you can't do it right now where you can do weeks at a time and just turn it off and it prorates it or whatever. You do one month, you pay for a month, you can shut it off, it will shut it off the next month and so on and so forth durability of the Starlink. It seems like it's pretty darn durable. This base is, from what we can tell, pretty bulletproof, and not to mention it's sturdy. We've had probably 30, 40 mile per hour winds and the thing doesn't fall over, which is impressive to me. I actually got up in the middle of the night one time. I was worried that I was gonna see it rolling across the campground, but it was completely stable and did not move. Now, I do not recommend testing that. I would recommend, you know, putting some tent stakes in the little holes on that stand so you don't have to worry about that. But the other thing is it seems like this stuff here could get scratched. I would guess that Starlink has made this really durable so that if it's hailing or whatever it may be, that's fine, it's not a big deal. But just know that it does seem like you could scratch the white part, the white film on there. It'd suck to have to pay another $700 to get a replacement dish. Dishy. Also, one thing you need to consider is that the Starlink cord needs to go into your rig someplace where you're going to connect it to the router. And then the router is going to be plugged into your rig. And what we've noticed is that the draw is pretty low. We have 300 amp hours of batteries and we lithium ion batteries and we haven't noticed that it takes up enough to really even worry about. I haven't even had the need to think about it. So you may be geeking out on how much draw you have from all of your different things. We don't really do that. If it's not a big deal, then we don't worry about it. If we run out of batteries and we turn on the engine or we plug in or something like that, and it hasn't been any kind of issue for us. But you're gonna have to think about where the cord is gonna go into your rig to connect to the router. For us, we've got the pop top and it goes in through one of the openings in the pop top. So we actually run it up it goes through the pop top zipper and then down and connects into our router, which then connects to an outlet. So you could try and run it through the back door and close the back door if you're comfortable with that setup or some other way of getting that cord into your RV, car, whatever you're using in order to get it to that router. The only thing I would preface is that they have said to not put kinks in that cable. So if you're noticing any kind of outages or anything, to check the cable first to make sure it's not bent. And that would worry me that if I had to shut it in the door for some reason that I would bend it too much and cause a problem there. But you can always try it. You can always get new cables if you do damage the cable and that would be fine. I just wanted to make sure that you are aware of that, thought about it. For us, it's really easy with how we just route it through the pop top. We're kind of lucky in that sense that we don't have to drill any holes or anything in order to get the cable into the actual van here. Lastly, mounting and storage. As you can see, we have not mounted it anywhere, but we may consider getting some sort of a mount 
to put up on our roof there just because it seems like in a lot of cases that would be a good place to have it unless you're underneath a bunch of trees where the 75 foot cable is really nice like i mentioned earlier to throw way out away from you in the clearing even though you're sitting in the shade underneath the trees so you kind of want to be able to play that game i think so if you could have the ability to mount it to your rig but then also if the you're under the trees you know use the cable and run it to wherever the starlink is going to get the best signal that would be the ideal situation and then for the storage you definitely don't want to have this thing hanging off of your rig as you're driving down the road i certainly don't want to unless maybe you've got some cool system that it like folds down close up next to your roof there but it's not a small device. So you have to take into account where you're gonna store that thing and it detaches. So if you're looking at storing it, you get to detach it and this is what you're working with. This is as storable as it gets. So what we've been doing is putting it on our back seat when we're driving and just kind of putting some stuff on top of it so it doesn't move around. And then you've got the base station as well that is going to have to go somewhere which is a little less annoying than the big dish system. It would be, have been nice if that pole went all the way in tight, but it is what it is. It's still worth it to have the particular system, but just know that it is a little bit of a pain in the butt to store it when you're not using it and you probably do not want it hooked up to your rig as you're driving down the road. So in conclusion, what I would say is that Starlink is a fantastic device for being able to get out away from people in the middle of nowhere, be able to connect, get good quality work done. But at the same time, it's not the end all be all. It's not going to have you uploading 20 minute long YouTube videos like that or you know, sending off your reels or your Instagrams if you're a media producer like that. It's not quite as good as the Whole Foods that we've learned to love while traveling around the country, but it could be, it's getting there. And it is good enough in order to get those things done. We're gonna continue to use it. We think it's a game changer for being able to plop yourself next to a mountain bike trail hook up, get some work done, do a few laps, camp, do, get some work done, and just eliminate that time travel that you have to do to go to the library or the Whole Foods or the Starbucks or the other coffee shops. So if you have any questions about this at all, hit us up in the comments down below. We're happy to answer them. We're testing this thing literally every single day because we live in the van full time. So if you have questions, let us know. If you like this video, if you thought it was informative at all, we really appreciate you watching. So we'd love it if you gave us a thumbs up. And if you are new to us, please hit the subscribe button. Um, we publishing review videos like this all the time, mountain bike videos, van life videos, sometimes fitness videos because I run a fitness company. So we appreciate you watching. And if I miss something, if you need more information, anything about the Starlink system, we're, you know, running it ragged right now. We'd be happy to help you make the decision if it's right for you. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. See ya.